Hi and welcome to this GCSE English Literature Revision video. We are focusing on Shylock and it's a general character study. Now let's start with who is Shylock. Shylock is a main character in The Merchant of Venice and importantly he is Jewish and he lived in a very anti-Semitic Christian Venice. He was a money lender, uh, a usurer, so he charges interest on money. And he was father to Jessica, who ultimately betrays him. She, she escapes, she converts to Christianity, and she marries a Christian. Now, in order to understand um, the two sides of Shylock, we need to think about the way that he can be often viewed as um, both a victim, victim there, and also as a villain, as a difficult, corrosive character. And we'll start today with the ways that he's seen as being a victim. We'll put victim over here. So we'll start at the beginning. Act 1, scene 3. This is when Shylock's first scene. And he says, Signor Antonio, many a time and often the Rialto you have rated me. The Rialto was the main financial district in Venice. And rated means, you know, you've had a go at me. Also in Act 1, scene 3, Shylock says... You call me misbeliever, cutthroat dog, and spit on my Jewish gabardine. And a the, the gabardine is a coat, but it was traditionally worn by uh, Jewish people. So there's a link to his cultural heritage there. We also have in Act 1, Scene 3, Shylock saying, You that did void your room upon my beard and foot me as you spurn a stranger cur. Um, a cur is a, a vicious dog. Antonio actually says to Shylock, I am as like to call thee so again, to spit on thee again, to spurn thee too. So Antonio's admitting that he's not going to change his behaviour towards Shylock. Shylock actually offers peace. He says to Antonio, I would be friends with you and have your love. However, that, that doesn't come about um, and Antonio continues to verbally abuse him. Now in Act 2, scene two, um, Shylock's servant, who's called Lancelot Gobbo, um, makes his plan to, to run away and he calls Shylock a kind of devil. We also um, hear Shylock referred to many times in the play as, as being devil-like or in similar words and we also hear him, ref hear him referred to just as the Jew, which I'll come to later. Again he says the Jew is the very devil incarnation. That means embodied, the, the, the devil here alive. So we've also got this part where um, Gobbo is talking about Shylock and he says, my master's a very Jew, give him a present, give him a halter. And a halter is a noose, a noose to hang yourself. So, and that's not... That's not, again, the first time that we'll hear that phrase coming up. Let's move on to Act 2, Scene 3. And here we have um, Jessica, and she's telling the audience that she's leaving her father. She says, but though I am a daughter to his blood, I am not to his manners. She's disassociating herself from her father. She's saying, I might be related to him, but I'm nothing like him. We'll move on to Act 2, Scene 5, and Jessica confirms that she's definitely running away and she's going to do it that night. And she again says to the audience, as an aside, Farewell, and if my fortune not be crossed, I have a father, you a daughter lost. She says, if everything goes well for me, I'll lose my father, you'll lose your daughter. OK, let's move on to Act 2. Uh, scene 8. And here again we've got Solanio. He calls Shylock the villain Jew. And here we have the scene where Solanio and Salarino are mocking Shylock for um, Shylock's language when he found out that his daughter had run away. So I'll just put these money bags here. And they claim that Shylock said two sealed bags of ducats. Now there's a suggestion here that Shylock is referring to his testicles and they're making a sexual joke out of Shylock's loss. They're saying that he was running through the street 
calling out about these two sealed bags. Um, they say that he said, double ducats stolen from me by my daughter. And then lastly, we've got jewels, two stones, two rich and precious stones stolen by my daughter. They're 100% mocking him. They're laughing at his misfortune. And we can definitely see, uh, the you know, the see pity in the audience here for Shylock. Although it's possible that an Elizabethan audience would have just found this funny. Let's move on to the next act. So this is going to be act three. Now we go to act three, scene one. And here we have um, Solania referring to the devil. And he says, here he comes in the likeness of a Jew. So remember, he's talking about the devil and he says, here he comes in the likeness of a Jew. Um, now, Shylock says that he can't believe that his daughter would rebel and once again they make a sexual joke they say to Shylock out upon it old carrion rebels it at these years that means can't you control your own flesh even at your age and it's a, it is a rude joke and they're, they're finding this hilarious and remember that Shylock has lost his daughter to a Christian now I want you to pause the video at this point. Hath not a Jew eyes is the speech that comes next. Shylock gives a very impassioned speech discussing how he's a Jew but he is a human like everybody else and he discusses the ways in which he's persecuted and the ways in which he is treated. It's really important that you commit a couple of these lines to memory. So pause this video now, have a look at the Hath not a Jew eyes speech and learn some of those some of those lines for your exam. Now, we've got Jessica, and Jessica, we find out from gossip on the street, is that she is having a wonderful time spending all her father's money. And Tubal tells Shylock this. He says, your daughter spent in Genoa, as I heard, in one night, four score ducats. So he's saying, you know, your, your, your daughter spent all this money, and Shylock is, you know, inevitably upset, but we're going to have to return to this when we consider the ways in which he is a villain, because Shylock says, thou stickest a dagger in me. So you think, okay, he's upset about his daughter, but then he says, I shall never see my gold again. Four score ducats at a sitting. Four score ducats. He cannot believe the amount of money that Jessica has spent. It's his money. He does seem to be more concerned about his money than his daughter um, but I've put this one over on the on the victim side because thou stickest a dagger in me suggests you know he's being really hurt here I'm just gonna put brackets around this because I think we'll return to this when we consider the ways that he's a villain let's move on right so we are up to act three scene three and here we have Thou calls me dog before thou hadst a cause, but since I am a dog, beware my fangs. Shylock is saying, you've called me a dog, now I'm going to behave like a dog. So it's important that you understand that Shylock feels victimised. He feels that he's been called names, he's been treated badly, and he's saying here, you know, you're going to treat me like this, I'm going to behave like this. And here I've just got a little piece of artwork for you to look at. This is an artist depiction of Shylock on the street with Antonio. And that's Antonio in the black hat and he's with his jailer. Um, he's under arrest and Shylock is, is saying to him, I, I don't want to hear it. You've been terrible to me. Now I'm going to be terrible to you. Right, we're moving on. And this is the important scene. This is the trial. So it's Act 4, Scene 1 and it's the trial. And I'm drawing Star of David here because there are loads of references in this scene to Shylock's religion and we see lots of anti-Semitism here. So firstly, he's called the Jew, even by the Duke. So call the Jew into the court. He's, he's rarely addressed by his own name. 
And then we've got, we all expect a gentle answer due. So the Duke is telling Shylock, before the court case has even really started, that he expects him to um, forgive Antonio. We've then got, I pray you think you question with the Jew. This is Antonio speaking. He's saying there's no point arguing with Shylock. And um, once again, he's addressed as the Jew. And I put another couple of references up here. So we've got his Jewish heart. So there's a there's a strong suggestion there that because he is Jewish, his, he has a hard heart. We've got Antonio saying, let me have judgment and the Jew his will. He's saying, just get on with it. And again, Shylock's labelled as the Jew. And then Shylock's actually at this point sharpening his knife on the sole of his shoe. But he's he's they he's called harsh Jew. I think this is Graciano saying this. Not on thy soul, but on thy soul, harsh Jew. Right. Um, we will move on. And I'm just putting a picture here of um, a vicious dog. Now, I know this is a horrible picture, but I want you to understand what the implications of being called a cur are. So I've put references to dogs or curs. And both of these are Graciano. Thy currish spirit and this currish Jew. It's incredibly insulting. And the imagery that we get from this as an audience is, is incredibly strong. Right, let's move down here. And we're going to just put a quick picture of Portia. And Portia says, why does the Jew pause take thy forfeiture? Now, I want you to remember, this is after Shylock has been told that he can go ahead with the bond. He's about to cut Antonio's chest open. And then he's told he can't spill any blood. Shylock actually tries to back off. He says, OK, just, you know, give me my money. And, you know, as, as you know from reading the play that he tries to leave the, the court. But before that... Portia really tries to back him into a corner. Why does the Jew pause? Take thy forfeiture. You know, she's saying, come on, get on with it. When she knows that he can't. Um, Shylock says, shall I not barely have my principal? And his principal is his uh, original sum of money. He's saying, can I not even have my money? And Graciano has absolutely no um, time or energy for Shylock at this point. He says that Shylock should be given a halter gratis, nothing else for God's sake. Now, I mentioned earlier in this video that the word halter would come up again. Um, Graciano is saying that the only thing Shylock should be given is a free rope to hang himself. So we've put a noose there. Um, Shylock is also told he has to convert to Christianity. And Graciano again says um, he will have two godfathers. And if it was up to Graciano, he would have 10 more. And then to bring thee to the gallows, not the font. Now, two god two godparents plus ten would make twelve, and twelve is the number that you have on a jury. So he's saying if it was up to him, he would be put in front of a court and taken to the gallows rather than christened. Now, Shylock's punishment. I'm not putting quotations here, I'm just gonna put up what happens as a reminder for you. He's forced to convert to Christianity. I'll put an asterisk there. He's forced to give half his money to the state and he's forced to leave the rest of his money to Lorenzo and Jessica in his will. Remember that Lorenzo and Jessica have run away with his money. So there's a bit of a stinger for him. Now, the reason I put an asterisk by the word Christianity is because Christians were not allowed to lend money and charge interest. So actually, not only has he lost everything, he's also lost his opportunity to make money and Shylock is in real you know state of distress at this point he actually asks that his life is not spared he says nay take my life and all you take my life when you take the means but whereby I live he says you might as well have killed me because I can't you're taking away my means to survive now we're going to have a look now at the ways that and uh, that Shylock is presented as a villain and we will start at the very beginning of the play. And I'm going to actually talk about Act 1, Scene 1 briefly. Now, Shylock isn't in this scene, but I want you to think of the ways that the Christians are juxtaposed, you know, put alongside uh, the Jews in the play so that we're given some comparison. And straight away, Antonio, first line of the play, in sooth, I know not why I am so sad. The audience instantly feels sorry for Antonio. 
and that sets the mood that shows us that you know the christians are the ones that we should be siding with and perhaps shylock's the baddie let's move on to act one scene three this is the scene where the deal is made it's actually shylock's first scene and shylock says i will buy with you sell with you talk with you walk with you but i will not eat with you drink with you nor pray with you we are shown that shylock does not like christians and he's relatively hostile i think you might agree in this speech he also says to the audience as an aside I will feed fat the ancient grudge I bear him. And he says, I hate him for he is a Christian. Now let's just pause on those two. He's looking forward to the opportunity to get revenge on Antonio, which is significant in terms of considering him as a, as a, as a villain. And I hate him for he is a Christian. Remember that most of the audience in Elizabethan England would have been Christians. so. That would have resonated with them. We've also got Shylock saying, cursed be my tribe if I forgive him. Shylock feels that he would be letting down all Jews. He, rep he feels he represents his religion and he would be letting down all Jews if he forgives Antonio. And then this bit's important. This is where the deal is made for the pound of flesh. These are Shylock's words. Let the forfeit be nominated for an equal pound of your fair flesh. Now at this point, you may well feel that Shylock shows his true colours. Um, I know people I've taught have said, you know, what an odd thing to think of. That shows that he, you know, has some malice under the surface. Now let's move on. We're going to look at Act 2, Scene 3. And Jessica is talking to Gobbo about the fact he's leaving. And she says, our house is hell. Not a lot more to say about that, but it just gives us an indication of what it might be like to live with Shylock. Now we'll move on again. We'll move on to act two, scene five. And Shylock has been invited to eat with the Christians. This is following the deal, obviously. And Shylock says to Jessica, and Gobbo I think is there too, but yet I'll go and hate to feed upon the prodigal Christian. So he, he hates the people he's going to eat with and he's saying, well, I'll just, you know, I'll feed upon them. I'll take advantage. Again, we see him as a villain. And then he sort of locks Jessica up when he's out. He says, hear you me, Jessica, lock up my doors. He's saying, you know, lock yourself in. He also says, clamber not you up to the casements. Uh, just put a picture here for you. Casements are windows. And he says, nor, to, nor thrust your head into the public street to gaze on Christian fools with varnished faces. Um, he's going out and there's going to be, um, he, he's discovered from, from his servant that it's possibly going to be a masked ball. And he does not like the idea of Jessica um, looking on this kind of Christian revelry. And we're going to look at Act 2, Scene 8. And here we say, we, we hear, sorry, that Antonio's ships may have sunk. I reasoned with a Frenchman yesterday who told me they're miscarried a vessel of our country. A vessel is a ship. Miscarried means it sank. It went wrong. And um, this is um, the Christian gents talking in the street. They're talking also about Antonio. And they say, a kinder gentleman treads not the earth. A bit like Act 1, Scene 1, we get a real contrast between how we're perhaps meant to view Antonio with how we view Shylock. Antonio is this kind, gentle character who can't do any wrong and Shylock is the, yeah, the vicious character. Right, let's move on. Act 3, Scene 1. And this is Solanio and Salarino on the street. They bump into Shylock and one of them says, you know, Shylock, you don't... You're not actually going to take the flesh, are you? He, you know, the, the men can't quite believe that Shylock's going to go ahead with this. Um, and he actually says, why, I'm sure, if he forfeit, thou will not take his flesh. What's that got good for? And actually, Shylock replies with, to bait fish with all. He's saying, I don't particularly want a pound of human flesh. It's It's no good to me. But he follows this up with, if it will feed nothing else, it will feed my revenge. This is an open admission from Shylock that all he wants to do is um, 
take revenge on Antonio for Antonio's treatment of him, even if it means killing Antonio. Okay, we're going to go over to this section on the other side of this presentation where um, we talked about Shylock being a victim. And I'm returning to this part where it says, Thou sticks a dagger in me, I shall never see my gold again. Now, I've mentioned this briefly before, but I just want to, at this point, think about what is meant here. Thou stickest a dagger in me. Very, very dramatic. And then it's followed up with, I shall never see my gold again. We very much get the impression that Shylock's shock lies in the fact that he won't see his money again. Doesn't seem to be that bothered about his daughter. Okay, back to this side. Act three, scene three. Now, Antonio has been arrested and for some reason his um, jailer has allowed him out for a little walk with the jailer and Shylock's not overly impressed by this because he thinks that Antonio should be locked up in a prison. But Shylock says, jailer, look to him, tell me not of mercy. He's saying, don't tell me to forgive him and keep an eye on him. Um, Antonio begs to speak. He wants to, I guess, beg for his life. Shylock says, I'll have my bond, I will not hear thee speak. I'll have my bond and therefore speak no more. Now I've counted up this and Shylock actually tells Antonio not to speak four times in this short scene and it is a short scene. Uh, Shylock actually only has 13 lines here and in four of them he's telling Antonio not to speak. It's a real sort of indication of his anger and the venom that you know lies within him. And we're going to go to the trial now. So Act 4, Scene 1. I'm going to write again the trial. And um, Shylock basically threatens the Duke. He says, um, I'll just put this up here, if you deny it, let the danger light upon your charter and your city's freedom. This means if you forgive or, you know, let Antonio off, then all of your laws will become invalid because you can't just make exceptions. So that's an important quotation. And it's quite a brave thing for Shylock to say in many ways, brave in the sense of it's, you know, he's bold as brass really standing up in the courtroom saying that. Um, and then he's asked to justify why he's behaving in this way. And he's, Shylock says this, so can I give no reason, nor I will not, for more than a lodged hate and a certain loathing I bear Antonio? He's saying, I'm not giving you a reason for why I want to do this. The only reason I feel like offering you is the fact that I hate Antonio. Loathing also means you know, hate, hatred. Bassanio is begging for Antonio's life. Bassanio offers um, 6,000 ducats. Remember, the original amount was... 3,000 ducats. Bassanio says, for thy 3,000 ducats, here is six. And Shylock really here shows that he's not going to budge at all. He says, if every ducat in 6,000 ducats were in six parts and every part a ducat, I would not draw them. I would have my bond. Um, he's saying, you know, you could offer me six times six and I would still take the pound of flesh. I'm not interested in the money. I've got this image for you. It's from a Stratford, Stratford theatre production. And I actually felt it was a little bit more striking than the uh, Al Pacino film version. So we've got Shylock here about to take the pound of flesh. And this is when um, Portia stops him. Uh, and Portia actually asks him, just, just before he goes to put the knife in, have by some sh surgeon Shylock on your charge... Um, to stop his wounds lest he do bleed to death. Now, I've included this because Shylock actually refuses to do this. He refuses to have a doctor nearby because he says it isn't nominated in the bond. We show a real, we, this shows a really kind of heartless character, I think. And Antonio, this is, you know, again, shows Shylock to be villainous, I think. If, if the Jew do cut but deep enough I'll pay it presently with all my heart um, it, Antonio is shown to be someone who even moments before what he thinks will be his death is able to make a pun he makes a joke if the Jew do, do cut but deep enough I'll pay it with all my heart 
and this puts Shylock in an, in an even worse light. Now, that is the end. I hope it was useful. You can follow us on um, Twitter and on our YouTube channel. Any questions, please ask below, or you know, I'm sure where to go to ask your teachers. Thanks for watching.